Welcome to Excel Manager Trick number 851. If you want to download this workbook, A50 to A53, click on the link below the video. In this video here, we want to ha see how to sum the unique values. So you see in this column here, we have a bunch of duplicates. There's a 5, there's a 5, 1, 1. And we only want to, if there's lots of duplicates, we only want 1 and add it. So we need to add a 5, a 1, a 4, a 3, skip over all of these, and a 2. So those are the only values we want. I think I got them a one, two, yeah. right? And so actually down when you highlight values, I did that, highlighted those, and then this one down there using the control key, you can see down here our total should be 15. But we want to do it with a formula. Now we're going to look at the frequency function. Uh, this example here, there are no blanks here. We have to do a little bit more complicated formula when there's blanks. And both of these formulas that we're going to look at depend on the frequency function. And there's a great Excel magic trick that goes on for like 50 minutes explaining every single aspect of the frequency function. Uh, so that's for more detail. All right, let's just look at the frequency. Frequency function, what does it do? Well, usually you give it a bunch of numbers. I'm going to click there, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, comma, and then you give it bins. For example, you give it 10, 20, 30, 40, and it counts in those groups, everything below 10, everything between 10 and 20, 20 and 30, etc. But what happens if instead of giving it bins proper, you give it the same exact values? I'm going to click there, Control, Shift, Down Arrow. What it's going to do, and it's programmed to do this, frequencies is programmed for the bins. If it sees a duplicate right there, and right there, it just ignores the second one. So since the purpose of frequency is to count, how many, the, the, this argument right here has all the raw data, but we also gave that 5 as a bin, as a category to count. Well, what it's going to do is it's gonna, for the bins, it ignores all the 5s, but for the data points, it's going to count them all. So there'll be a 2 right there, and then there'll be some huge number there because there's lots of 1s, right? It'll count. But when it gets down to this 1 and this 5, there'll be zeros. So let's just see that that's true. Highlight an F9 key. So there we go. So we have three fives, eight ones, one four, et cetera. Now, notice the pattern. There's either a number or a zero. All right, so what am I going to do? I'm going to undo that. And since I need to count, um, sorry, I need to not have that. Let me hit F9 again. I need to not have a three, an eight, a one. I actually want either a true or a one there. I'm going to convert this to a true string of trues and falses. Ah, anything greater than 0, that means there'll be a true anytime it encounters the first um, occurrence of a number. So I'll hit F9. Now, I'm going to, that's, as soon as you get your, your array of trues and falses, we can use that and multiply it times all of these values. The trues will turn out to be 1s. We'll, wherever there's a true, it'll say 1 times 5, 1 times 4, et cetera. So check this out. I'm going to use the sum product. Now, some product takes arrays and multiplies them. Well, the first array I want are all the values, comma, and then, oh, wait a second. The second array would be perfect if some product could take the trues and falses and multiply them times the numbers, but it can't deal with trues and falses, so I'm going to convert those trues and falses to ones and zeros. Double negative is a great way to convert trues and falses to ones and zeros. But you've got to put this in parentheses. That greater than symbol, that's a, a comparative operator, happens at the very bottom of the order of precedence in how things are calculated. The double negative will occur first. Now we have two arrays. I could highlight this and hit the F9 key, and there it is. So that array of numbers would be multiplied by this, and only where there's a 1 will the sum part of sum product add. I'm going to Control Z and Enter. Number sign value. Now, there's another um, interesting aspect, and I should have mentioned this earlier, right here. If I hit F9, if you were to count this, it delivers that last zero right there is an extra category that the frequency um, adds. So if there's any values greater than the largest value in the bins, it will properly count. So what do we need to do? Well, that means this array is one number bigger than this array. So I'm going to undo that and change Control-Z and change this to A20. 
And so now you can see our range down there. Now, why do we have to do that? Because some product can only multiply uh, arrays or ranges that are the same dimension. We need uh, 1 by 20. So A2, no, 1 by 19, I mean. One column, 19 rows. And so now when I hit enter, 15. that will count that 15. All right, so that's if all of the numbers, if there's no blanks. We're going to have to take it up a notch if we're going to encounter blanks. All right, I'm going to scroll over here and just so we have a little bit more room here. The formulas are listed over here if you download the workbook. And again, this, this video does everything about frequency. All right, um, I'm going to start off with the sum function. Now, we're going to use the if function to isolate um, the cells that are not blank. And anytime you put an array into the if function, uh, the first argument of the if function, it requires control shift enter no matter what. So usually use some product function like we did just a moment ago over here, because this is an array formula, but we didn't use control shift enter because some product is programmed. That argument says array, so it knows it's an array. It doesn't require control shift enter. But the thing is, the if function we're just about to use over here, even if you put it inside of some product, it still requires uh, control shift enter. So to avoid some confusion, just use some. Then nobody will look at it and say, oh, some product, it doesn't require control shift enter. All right, now, inside the sum, we're going to have to build, use the if function and say if, and then it's unique and the cell is not blank, then we'll highlight the range and we'll add it. All right, how are we going to do that? We're going to use the if function. Now, the logical test, there's two things we need, not blank and unique. Now remember back just a second ago when we did the frequency function and we hit the F9 key, there was only a number where there was a unique value. The rest was zeros. Well, the cool thing about the logical test argument in if is it'll interpret any non-zero number as true. So check this out. I'm going to use the frequency again, meaning frequency function again, data array and bins. Now we're, it's going to be the two arguments here are going to be different than our last formula. But the point is, we need inside of this if, uh, we're going to use the frequency to deliver a number, and then the value of true will just be this, and it will add it properly. All right, you ready? I'm going to say inside the, for data array, if anything in this range is not blank, so I'm going to highlight that range, not blank, so less than, greater than, double quote, double quote, Actually, so if it's not blank, then what do I want? Remember, this is inside the uh, data array. I want to use the match function. The match function. I'm going to highlight both of these ranges here. I mean, uh, that range there for the lookup value. Oh, what? what's that? Well, let's check this out, comma, and then the lookup array. Oh, if you put the same exact range in lookup array and lookup value, since match function tells you the position of a particular item, it will give us just the position of the first occurrence. Now, how are we going to, uh, we, we need to make sure and go comma, and for the last part of the match, we need to say exact match. So I'm going to put a 0 here. Let's just see how this works. Remember, match looks up a number and tells you the position. Well, if you give it, give it all of the values here, it's going to look up 1, 1, 1, 1. Well, what position is the first one? We said exact value, so we'll only find the first one. Oh, exact value for match type. Well, what is it going to do? It's going to say position 2, but here it'll say position 2, and here it'll say position 2 and position 2. Let's just see that that's true. F9, sure enough, 2, 3, 2, 2. So all the 2's represent the number 1. Control Z that those so if not blank then please give me all of the positions that I'm going to close this if function off here we do not need the false part that is our data array so if I highlight this right here data array is going to have all the numbers all the positions so F9 and we see false 2 2 absolutely beautiful notice it's skipping over that uh, uh, empty cell there. Well, that's the data array. Let me control Z. And so bins, we just need uh, one, two, three, four, and it will count all of the twos in exactly one position. And then 
that'll be our trigger to say this is the first value and not blank. Control Z, comma. Well, bins, we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so I'm going to use the row function. Highlight that same range. Maybe I should copy this. The row of that. Now that's going to give me actually two because that's a row. So from it, I need to subtract row of the first one, E2. So now it's 2 minus 2 is 0, 1, 2, 3. So we add one more, and that's how we get an array of 1 to 18, I believe it. 1 to 18. Those are the bins. So it's going to count. The frequency function is going to take all those twos and count them in position two. Close parentheses on the frequency. Now let's highlight this frequency. Remember, this is the trigger to say, I am unique and I am not empty, F9. Absolutely cool, 8, 2, 2, 1. Now the if function can handle that. All the zeros are false. Any uh, non-zero number is going to be uh, true. So Control Z, comma. And what do I want? The values. Value 2, we don't need the value false, so we close that off. And there's the sum, close that off, and Control Shift ten. Enter. So we have 10. Now uh, let's just try this. Let's put another 1. one. And let's put, um, actually, you could test it. You know, go 1, 4, 3, and a 2. And then look down here, it's 10. If I put a 10 here, that ten. better be 20. Right? There is a variation on this. Uh, um, Aladdin always posts this. If you had wild cards, which I don't think you'd ever have with uh, values like this, um, then you'd use this version here. All right, so how to sum unique values. There is if you have blanks, and this one will work just fine if there are no blanks. See an extra 